And this is the last batch. Just put it in there. These are cooling. Put a few more ice cubes in it. Dip some of the water out because as the ice melts. Got that. Got that much ice less. More we'll ever use for this job today. And when we make ice cream, which we do a lot in a big old, uh, I think it's a gallon and a half ice cream machine, we uh, freeze these uh, liter bottles and gallon milk jugs. And we uh, just put a bunch of holes in it with the uh, ice pick, but good lord, you got a lot of pressure doing that. You can't have your hand anywhere near it. Even my glove won't protect your ice pick will go right through it. And then we cut it down to sides. We can use the milk cartons that I plant my tomatoes in. As long as they're good and clean and dry, you just fill them up. A little secret. When you fill up these liter bottles with water, you need to stop about right there. And then squeeze the bottle in until the water comes out the top. And then put the cap on it. And then put it in the freezer. We mark these with the date. So that we know this is 2012 frozen. If we wanted to use this in drinks, it's clean. We've cleaned the bottle out. It's clean water in it. Good ice. But if you will stop short of the top, squeeze it in, even with a plat wax milk carton. As you can hear, my beans are boiling over. But uh, when this thing expands, when the ice freezes, water expands when it freezes. And instead of splitting these things open, especially a wax line, milk or juice carton, they'll split on you. But if you squeeze them some and push some of the water out, when it freezes, the ice will expand the bottle back or the little wax milk carton back and won't split them open. So if you put them in a cooler, we take these every week to the river with all the food that we got perishable in the cooler. We put them in the freezer at the river. When we come back, we take them out the freezer and put them back in the cooler. We don't ever buy ice. It's just back and forth. We ice all our drinks down with gallon jugs of water. Uh, you can buy them at Walmart or you can take an old milk jug and clean it out and put water in it. And it's eight pounds of ice for free. You got a freezer that's probably empty. And the best way to have a freezer is full. Because the fuller it is, the uh, less energy it takes to keep it cool. And if you have a power outage, all that mass of frozen stuff in there will keep for days, as long as you don't open it. When we have a bad storm, we put tape on it, uh, duct tape, so nobody will open that freezer. I don't care what's going to go on, and we have saved a lot of frozen food, because when you've got several hundred pounds of frozen stuff in the freezer, it will keep for days. Gloves off. All we did was had uh, salt water. We blanched them for four minutes. A green bean out your garden wash will take seven minutes to cook on top of the stove. Quicker in a pressure cooker, but you can overcook them in a pressure cooker. Now all I got to do is put them in seal meal bags. Clean up these uh, pots and pans and uh, get ready to fix the pizza in a little while. Glad that you watched today and hope some of this might help. I don't know if y'all have one of these little spinners. Uh, they were made for salads, lettuce. They really need little deals. When we are uh, freezing things, we will put the beans in here. They've sat there. We drain the water off occasionally. You'll find a little piece of ice in them. And then we put this lid on. And since I'm holding this camera, I can't do it. But as you turn this handle while you hold the big handle there, the interior spins and centrifugal force forces all the water off the beans and then when you freeze them you don't have a problem with sucking water up into your uh, vacuum sealer machine but you really have to hold this pretty firmly and really go like mad and while I'm sealing it I'm doing the next batch and then I just put them in the bags uh, a lot of times I will just set up six or eight bags and then just seal them one after the other. But it, it's hard on a machine to do them that rapidly. So uh, most of the time I'll get one started and all the bags are marked and ready to go. And while it's sealing up I will spin the next ones and then I'm ready to dump it out of this container. Because you can just lift this out or do one hand. And then you can pour the water at the bottom. It worked pretty good.
Well, this is how we put away squash. We clean it thoroughly with a uh, vegetable brush. We rinse it off thoroughly. We cut it into slices, and they're anywhere from, I don't know, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths of an inch. We put it on a cookie sheet, put it in the freezer, and then we take it out. And we have found that this little tool here is really nice to get under them. One hand, it is ridiculous on this. See, you can get on them and they'll pop off. It's a lot easier if you could have another hand on them. And then you just put them in the bag, suck the air out of it, freeze them. And that's a couple hours work. Snap them off, wash them off, freeze them and bag them.